Thank you so much, Martin, and thank you all for organizing this highly important event, and it is really a, a timely event to, to organize. So, um, speaking about defending the defenders is something that I have been doing at a several working group of the parties, and as you mentioned, we discussed it also in Montenegro. Uh, and in the last year or two years, I have also been following these um, developments very closely in relation to the Eskesu agreement in the Caribbean and Latin America. The protection of persons exercising their particip participatory rights in environmental matters goes to the very heart of the Aarhus Convention. The Guardian, the newspaper usually publish on an annual basis figures by global witness about the fate of environmental defenders around the world. And recently it published the figures of, for 2020. Last year, some 227 people, according to his figures, were killed around the world for engaging in protecting forests, river system, ecosystems. Most of these killings took place in Latin America, like Colombia, Mexico, Brazil, and Nicaragua, and also in Southeast Asia. Therefore, it is a promising sign that the regional Eskesu agreement applicable to Latin America and the Caribbean has now entered into force. Hopefully, all states in that region will join the agreement, and hopefully we will see similar regional developments elsewhere. The Eskesu agreement provides a bold provision on the protection of environmental human rights defenders, in addition to protecting essentially the same rights as the Orange Convention does. While such killings, luckily, are very rare in the UNECE region and the Oris Convention region, these actions represent only the worst part of the spectrum of harassment, persecution, penalization, etc., of people who exercise the rights such as those provided for by the Oris Convention. Preventing peaceful manifestations, detaining or harassing individuals who voice their concern for activities harmful to human health and the environment are other examples of acts by states or by other actors without the states intervening to stop them. And we see such actions, unfortunately, in the UNECE region as well. The Aarhus Convention, just like the Eskesu Agreement, has a bold provision to protect and defend the defenders. According to Article 3.8 of the Convention, the parties must ensure that persons exercising their rights under the Convention shall not be penalized, persecuted, or harassed in any way for their involvement. Again, this applies both to penalization, persecution, and harassment by public bodies, whether national or local police or mil military forces, and by private persons, gangs, paramilitias, corporations or whatever, try to prevent people from enjoying and exercising the convention rights. So the parties must ensure that none, nobody threatened these rights to members of the public of the company in enjoying their rights under the convention. While in hindsight, I think this provision, Article 3.8, just like in the Eskisu agreement, would merit an article of its own. But that doesn't uh, does not preclude the bold normative content of Article 3.8. And I want to stress that really, it's short, but it is very powerful. The Compliance Committee has set out in its findings and recommendation concerning communication 102 that, and I quote, if members of the public are penalized, harassed, and persecuted for exercising their rights under the convention, it puts in grave jeopardy the implementation of the convention as a whole by the party concern. And it is quite obvious. You don't bother about exceptions for having access to information provided, or you don't bother about whether it is 27 or 28 days for participation. If you fear for your life or for your personal situation uh, in engaging in that. So it's really fundamental that th these rights are ensured by the parties. And it is serious and it is important to stress that there is nothing to indicate that Article 3.8 of the OIS Convention is weaker than the provision in the SKSU agreement. 
While the Oris Convention does not identify defenders, it actually considers any person or every person a defender of the aims of the convention and every person as a holder of the rights, every person as a defender of the rights set out by the convention. The Compliance Committee has in a few cases found parties non-compliant with the provision and it has taken that provision very seriously. And I expect the committee to continue to take it seriously in the future. It has also developed a scheme to examine non-compliance with Article 3, building on the human rights regimes to identify members of the public having exercised the right to identify to what extent they have been harassed, to examine to what extent such harassment is related to the rights under the convention, and then also to put the burden of proof on the party concern to show whether such measures were necessary, whether they were in relation to the convention or at all, to show that no such penalization, persecution or harassment took place in the first place. Now, the convention has acted um, in this regard, and it is important to keep in mind the spectrum of actions by states and private actors that can have serious implications for environmental democracy in general and the enjoyment of the convention right in particular. And on that note, I should say that the draft decision to be taken now by the meeting on the parties on the rapid response mechanism is a welcome and timely move to strengthen environmental democracy all over the UNEC region and to send a bold message also outside the world. I think this mechanism will add to the protection provided so far by the compliance mechanism. It will highlight the importance of, the, of these uh, rights. And I think it is, um, it is really something to, to celebrate. And I think we will, be, we will need to pay increasing attention to these matters in the future. Now, Martin, I will stop there. I look forward to listen to the experience and the presentations of other participants, and I'm happy to come back later on in the discussion. Thank you.